In this video, we're going to look at the second fundamental theorem of calculus. Up to this point when we've been integrating, we've always had values of a and b for the lower and upper limits of integration. And x is obviously the variable of integration, meaning we would have some function and then dx. So dx means with respect to x. Sometimes, however, we're going to have a situation where x is going to be used as the upper limit of integration as well. So in those cases, in order to avoid confusion, um, quite often we'll use f of t dt, so we'll change the um, actual function with respect to t, just so that it doesn't get confused with the x, which is now our upper limit of integration. So this is the way we've been seeing it, um, the integral from a to b of f of x dx, and this is the definite integral as a function of x. So we have x as one of the limits of integration. So before we actually use the second fundamental theorem of calculus, let's make sure that it's going to make sense to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the derivative of the integral. Now, typically, if you find the derivative of the integral, those two things will cancel out. But when we have an x involved, obviously it's going to be a little bit more complicated. So let's just do this the long way before we learn about the second fundamental theorem of calculus, which makes it easier. So I'm going to leave d dx, that means I'm going to differentiate with respect to x. I'm going to go ahead and do the integral first. So I'm going to integrate t squared, which is going to be t cubed over three, and my limits of integration are going to be two and x. So again, I'm keeping d dx out here because I haven't used it yet. Let's plug in x, so that's x cubed over three, and then now let's plug in two, two cubed, over three. Now what happens? Well, I'm going to take the uh, derivative. So what's the derivative of x cubed over three? Three x squared over three, which is just x squared. And what's the derivative of eight thirds? Zero. So my final result after integrating and taking the derivative is x squared. Now notice what I started with. I started with t squared and I had an upper limit of integration of x, and so it looks like all I did was replace t with x. And in fact, that's almost what the fundamental theorem of calculus says. Sorry, the second fundamental theorem of calculus. It says if f is continuous on the open interval i containing a, then for every x in that interval, we can say that the derivative of the integral with x as an upper limit is just f of x, and that's what we did. So looking at question number one down here, because it's just x, I don't have to do any work. I don't have to integrate this and then find the derivative. I can say, well, the derivative of the integral is me replacing t with x. So x squared over x squared plus one. Easy peasy. Now, that's all well and good, but what happens here? Well, here I've got a negative x and a positive x. So I have a negative x and positive x, which means it's going to be more difficult. I can't just plug in and say, well, that must be x squared, because in fact, it's not. So if I think about breaking this into negative x to zero, t squared, uh, dt, plus zero to x, t squared dt. What's going to happen is from zero, negative x to zero, I'm going to get negative x squared. And then from zero to x, I'm going to get x squared. And I'm actually going to end up with two x squared. So if I think about this visually, just to make sure that it makes sense to you, this is really just this function, right? I probably could have done a better job graphing it, but you get the idea. If I were to have two parts here, where this is negative x and this is x, this area is x squared and this area is x squared. So we have two x squareds. So again, we have to know our functions and know our theorems, but we also have to be smarter than our theorems. And for the last one, again, this is two to x squared, so you would think that we would be okay to just say this is one over 
x squared cubed, which is 1 over x to the sixth. And you're almost right, except we are taking the derivative. And remember, with the chain rule, when we have a function that has a derivative, we have to, in fact, multiply it by the derivative. So this is almost right, but I also have to take it times the derivative of x squared, which of course is 2x. So this is 1 over x to the 6, and then I'm going to multiply by 2x. So this actually ends up being 2 over x to the 5th. And again, that's only because this guy has its own derivative. Coming up next, we are going to take a look at integration by substitution, and we're going to start with indefinite integrals.